Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, and I have a tutorial for you today. This is based on the cut loose pattern called the Log Cabin Bouquet by uh, Cut Loose. Um, and this is based around some Creative Grid rulers. Of course, those are our go to ruler. And this is the quilt we chose chocolate covered cherries by Kim Deal. She designs for Henry Glass Fabrics. I love these rich colors really set off with the creamy background just so nice warm and inviting so i want to help unpack um, this looks very sophisticated you have to be an accomplished super accomplished quilter and it's not true the rulers do a lot of the work for you you do need to ultimately as you're sewing your blocks together be able to really get a good accurate quarter inch seam allowance and i've got some aids on my machine that's going to help me get that accomplished but I wanna just get started showing you how this block is really kind of coming together. It's a very unique combination of two rulers. Those are called the log cabin uh, rulers. I have the log cabin trim tool. I have the four and a half inch finishing at four and an eight and a half inch finishing at eight. And then out here in the outer border, you recognize this is a flying geese. That's a separate tool. So this is, a uh, creative grid required project. Cut Loose always writes their patterns based on the use of these tools. So I don't have an alternative method for you if you don't use those tools because this is the pattern we've been given. So to kick this off, the one thing I want to tell you about all creative grid products is they come with, of course, a set of instructions. But sometimes, us included, every now and again, we misplace a uh, some instructions, maybe they get ripped, we spill something on them. Here's the great thing about Creative Grid's website. Creative Grid USA, go ahead and head over there. Um, you can, anytime you lose your instructions or maybe you wanna preview, how does a ruler work? Do I really wanna buy that? Um, you can always preview those instructions, learn more about the ruler by just clicking on their download, in, uh, the, download the instructions and you'll be able to see that. So again, Creative Grid USA, we'll try to put that up for you there. But the other thing I wanna call your attention to, I printed this off of their website. On the log cabin tools specifically, beneath their kind of where their, their video is, you'll see some other images of some additional instructions. I printed those and we'll be using those today. This is the sewing and trimming sequence. What if that means is, in the main instructions of the log cabin trim tool, notice here how the logs of the block, they're just saying make sure they're at least as long as they need to be, right? And you can see this strip is far longer than the center. And as they build out the log cabin block, which we will do together, you have a lot of kind of ragged edges. Things are longer than they need to be. Not my favorite approach to this. I would rather cut these to the exact size they need to be. And so that is what the sewing and trimming sequence does for you, is it gives you the option to, in advance, cut your strips to the exact length that you, uh, they need to be. So I'm gonna be taking this approach today uh, of using the sewing and trimming sequence, which is gonna tell us exactly what size to cut everything to. Notice how on this side of the block, we're always using the background. That's the same every single time. This part where the colors are is completely scrappy. That's all up to you. And you could uh, vary every single one of those blocks. Just make sure you don't run out of fabric. You have plenty in your kit, limited kits available. But you want to make sure you don't always pick that for your longest uh, log every time, right? It's supposed to be very balanced where Sometimes that's your long log, and sometimes that's your shorter log. So you get the idea, very scrappy, I love that look. So starting off with our sewing and trimming sequence, they let us know that the center, we're starting off here with the four inch log cabin trim tool. The eight inch log cabin trim tool has the same set of instructions where there's a sewing and trimming sequence where you can also print that and it's going to tell you exactly what to cut 
those pieces too. For the four inch, that center square is one and a half inches. And notice for the first light piece, they're saying cut this to one and a quarter, at least one and a quarter. Uh, uh, yes, by one and a half. So we will place this right side together. And let's just do that. Let's sew our quarter of an inch. Right away, I am going to be using my seam guide to keep me true to my quarter inch seam allowance. And we'll get our iron going here. This is your lovely backing option on this kit. And we'll always press away from our center. And it's, you know, if you always think about that, just keep pressing away from the center and we'll work in a clockwise rotation the whole time. So here's our unit now. Now becomes the second light strip, one and a quarter, and I might have said at least one and a quarter, one and a quarter by two and a quarter. I'm so used to the other instructions that are at least this. No, we're cutting precisely one and a quarter by two and a quarter. I love that that clicks right into that, right? Just like a puzzle piece versus I don't, I don't really want that other one being a little bit longer. I want that to, to click in. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew from this side so I can keep an eye on that seam. And again, we will sew with our quarter inch seam allowance. And press to the outside. Sometimes when you're doing a pattern, oftentimes you keep having to refer to the instructions of which direction am I pressing. Press away from the center every time, you are good to go. <laughs> and when you're making your blocks. I encourage you to continue to keep placing this back down because it's a square. I could turn this in any orientation and this piece would fit. So we know that our center's here and that first small cream is always going to be on the right. Right side together, press and press, right? And you continue in this fashion. I'm going to go ahead and sew that on. When I come back, we're going to use the trim function, and we'll talk more about these rounds and the trim function, how to read this tool, use this tool. So let me get those sewn on, and when I come back, we will go ahead and trim our first round of our log cabin block. So here's the block sewn, everything, of course, pressed away from the center. This is when the tool comes into play. And I want to show you, I'm going to turn a piece of paper over. Maybe it'll help you see it a little bit better. So notice we have the quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the perimeter. I just wanted to sh uh, point that out. Four inch log cabin trim tool. Jean Ann Wright, by the way, created this. Round one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to use the rounds one, two, which is a little bit fainter to see, and three. So round one, we did that, right? We had the center and we added uh, fabric around uh, the first uh, round of fabric. So now we'll place that black square around our center. It works wonderfully with a spinning mat because now once I start trimming, I really do not want to pick up my piece. I would rather rotate around my fabric. So we have trim one right there. Oh, I just rotated my, just a little bit. That's okay. I'll get reacclimated there. <laughs> and two. Now I'm going to keep going because notice I can't trim this other side because my rulers, my tools in the way. Rotate this 180 degrees. Now that has exposed, of course, my other two sides. And then we will make sure we reorient, keeping in mind that that small little cream is on the right, is always going to be our base. That's always where we're going to start again. Now we begin our next round. So 
here comes the next log and the next log and the next log and you would trim and the next log and the next log and the next log and with that in mind this is what it takes you to right so if after the second round all you would when you get ready to trim the second round instead of being at round one we would have dropped that down into the slot trim the two sides rotate trim the two sides where we are now right that was the center one two we trimmed now we're at three so just as you would suspect since this was round one two and three three is right here smack over the middle now I get to trim around all four sides without rotating um, my tool. Instead, I will rotate my mat around that. If you were just looking to make these cute little log cabin blocks that finish at four, you're done. You've achieved that. But we will now take this and use this in the center of a bigger block. So let me show you where, how this is being used. Right here, this is basically right in this spot. Notice though, we added more to that. This is where the next log cabin tool comes into play. So again, setting this up so that my center is here, my small little short little cream log is right there we begin to now use the sequence for my eight inch log cabin and remembering that this is now four and a half when we switch over now to our eight inch log cabin trim tool right in order to have achieved this big of a space we would have already used rounds to have be a little bit further along in this ruler. That's why we're not, we're going to ignore round one, right? And we're going to start right here. The first light, now the strips are one and three quarter inches wide. They were, sh they were narrower on this one. One and three quarter by four and a half. That makes sense. We know we have a four and a half inch unit here. So if I measure this, this should measure four and a half by one, excuse me, one and three quarters. I'm not sure if I said one and a half, one and three quarters. That will go here, get sewn on. This piece will go here and get sewn on. And then my piece on the right, my piece on the top, right? And so on and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and sew those because I want to engage you in the, the eight inch log cabin, same concept but I would like to have show you where we're gonna pick that up and we're gonna start trimming. So I'll be right back. I'll have the sewn, the four sewn on, press the outside and we will trim. So I'll be right back. So I've sewn the next rounds down and where we will start on our eight inch log cabin trim tool is with round two. The reason being again that we're not round one is round one would be if you were using this ruler the whole time and building your entire block with just this tool. We know we got the center part of this using the four inch tool. So now we will go and bracket our round two right around that center, that very center that we created together in the very beginning. That's right here. This gives us the access that we're looking for to trim on the right side and of course up above. So let's go ahead and get that trim. And I'm gonna keep rotating. And now we know we need to rotate that to expose those other two sides. and give a trim. Got some other alignment lines. Make sure when you rotate that mat, mat back that we are always keeping our eye on this little guy right here <laughs> so we keep this oriented properly. 
And then to finish up, of course, this comes in, this comes to the bottom, this to this side, and then above. Then this will be focused right around our center once again. This will all be sewn on, and you get to trim around the whole perimeter, just like we did in the beginning when we created our, our four uh, and a half inch, ultimately to be four inch finish. That's how you use the log cabin trim tools. They're great. Sometimes when you make a traditional log cabin, you're not using the tool. They can get just a little bit wonky. I've had a few wonky blocks over the years of making log cabin. I love that this has a little bit of that oversize. You get to trim it up and the next round just going on perfectly. And obviously using this sewing and trimming sequence, I love pre-cutting those to the exact length. You kind of check on yourself to make sure that you are in fact trimming everything up perfectly. The next log fits right on. I love that kind of confirmation. Um, as you can see now, it's just the way you lay the blocks out that will create this layout. And of course, when you're bringing those together, that's when the quarter and seam allowance is very important as well. I've got my quarter and seam guide. I've got the diagonal seam tape on my machine all the time now, definitely helping to keep me honest with that quarter and seam allowance. Once you get to the outer border, so many times in the outer border, it's just a border, right? I love that they took this to the next level and they had a chance to add the beautiful flying geese to accentuate and we get to use more of this beautiful chocolate covered cherry um, fabric. So we're going to talk about using the ultimate flying geese tool by Creative Grid. I've got a little sticky note to remind me and I'll go ahead and just clean this up a bit so we can be focusing just on the ultimate flying geese tool. And you're going to see how incredibly versatile this is. Easily one of my top three favorite tools from Creative Grid. I'll be right back. So I'm back with, got the table kind of cleaned up. Can focus on the Ultimate Flying Geese tool. Super versatile in that it makes multiple sizes. Uh, I love that you can get as small as a half inch by one inch flying geese. So cute for miniature quilts. Um, all the way up to four by eight and everything in between. Um, I want to show you how to read the tool. Of course, instructions are included as we talked about. If you lose those, again, Creative Grid USA, go there, type in the name of that tool and the instructions are gonna be right there. I love that. Sometimes you just lose stuff, right? You just lose stuff. For our project today, we know the finished size of our flying geese per the instructions inside our pattern are going to finish at two by four. That's how you enter into reading and using this tool, is it says finish size. What are you gonna do? I wanna finish at a two by four. I want this to be two by four sewn into my project. So that means your letter D, letter D. Just keep that in mind. And then in order to accomplish that, it says that what we need to do is to cut one, that is five and three quarters of the bigger piece and that my uh, smaller four squares, notice this is cut four and there's a picture of four of those, is cut to three and a quarter. That's what we have. One larger one and four smaller ones. There's two trim functions on this, trim one, trim two, and that's where the letter D is gonna come into play. More on that later. To set this up to even use the trim tool, the first thing that you will do is mark on the back of all of your cream squares. You can either draw the line corner to corner and sew on either side of that, or I love, again, using another Creative Grid tool that has the nice grip on it where I am drawing on either side of this. This is the seam guide. This is the nine inch seam guide. I, and I've always said it, I'm way more accurate sewing on a line than trying to find a quarter of an inch every day, all day, right? So we've taken that approach of going ahead to draw those lines. Once you have that, you will just stack them just like this, right? And sew directly on those lines. You can see we've done that. Once that's done, you'll just cut from corner to corner and we'll press to the outside. This technique that we're doing, by the way, will produce four flying geese that we have the opportunity to trim up with minimal waste. 
It's very efficient. So if you're working on a quilt with a lot of flying geese, um, this quilt or anything else, this might be a really helpful tool for you. And of course, you would press the other two to the outside as well. With one of your other marked squares, you will set this right into that corner. Notice this is jetting right out through this valley and pin. And once again, sew on the lines. Let's go do that together this time. That was done for us in advance, but now we'll do this one together. Once again, cut corner to corner, and we will press away. The traditional way I learned to make flying geese, there was a lot of ways. You, know, you had the rectangle and the squares, drew the line, sew and flip and trim, and there was a lot that you're trimming away. I love this technique, not only for the a lot less waste, but also speed and precision. Those are good words, right? So that created two. And as you can see, once that's pressed the outside and you add this, that creates two. That's how you get four flying geese out of this. Now, what's this business about this trimming? Because you can see this is definitely oversized. This is where the trim one function and the trim two function is. Notice this line here. And there's all kinds of lines. We're letter D. We've said this thing needs to finish at two by four. So what we will do is line up, there's our lines, scoot that right into that point. Notice it exposes the right side and the top side. That's why there's two functions, because I can only get half of my trims right now. Trim one includes the right side and the top. I'll rotate that one more time, and they've conveniently put trim two, let me move, bring that over so you can see that, right up in this corner. So I just drop right down into this D. I'm going to drop right into that, and once I do this, it's one of my favorite things about this tool, and push this up so you can see it. See there's our letter D? I'm going to scoot this over. So now I have alignment. So I love this. Here, 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 and here, I also have alignment saying, yes, you are absolutely in the right place. And I complete one, and then finally two, and we have a perfect flying geese block. I've been doing this a long time. I just don't produce this consistent of a block every single time. Sometimes, but I want, I, my goal is to hit that every time, right? So that when I sew these together, those points are exactly where they need to be. I'm not clipping a point or they didn't nestle into the next block above. So these tools, yes, they're an investment, but you're going to use them on so many other projects. Obviously, you can produce this amazing quilt, but then you have this resource and tool in your uh, sewing room to use maybe share with a friend in a quilt retreat, show them how it works. I love that. I've learned a lot at quilting retreats. So I know we've covered the, the log cabin uh, tools, both in the four and how we used it in combination with the eight. Very clever. A lot of, a lot of credit there goes to Cut Loose to design that. And then we got to, I got to show off my, my, one of my favorite tools with the flying geese. So again, chocolate covered cherries, limited kits. If you love this one, be sure to pick it up. The backing, Obviously, you'll need the tools as well. Subscribe if you haven't already read, uh, already done so, and I look forward to seeing you on many more videos coming up at Shabby Fabrics. Mm -hmm.